Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the ultimate pleasure. I always say we have the pleasure. We have the ultimate pleasleasure of welcoming Lamar Jackson on the podcast, fresh off of inking his five-year extension. Yeah. Lamar, congratulations, man. I, I think I speak for all of us around here that we are so thankful that this <laughs> thing is done. I'm with you. I appreciate that, man. But I'm with you. I agree. Yeah. So my first question for you is, uh, you know, you use a SpongeBob meme to kind of announce that we are getting close on reaching an agreement here. Yeah. So if you are picking a SpongeBob meme for your emotions today after inking the contract, which one would you go with? Oh, the one where he dancing like. He doing that dance right there. That's the one I do today. You've kind of become like the meme lord, man. You your meme <laughs> game is popping. You know, I've been I've been uh kinda like watching, you know, people tweet and stuff like that and I see like the reactions from it. So I'm like, you know, I got pretty good ideas. You know, so why shouldn't I just throw out my gifts? And well, that's what I've been doing. I mean, you, you can take Garrett's job anytime. I know, <laughs> no, you I know. can keep your current job, but if no, you want some Garrett. extra work, you know what? I think this is, we'll trade. We'll trade contracts <laughs> and we'll trade jobs. How's that sound? She know, look, listen, Garrett do a great job. Like, <laughs> I just got my little one pop in, two pop okay. ins. You know, Garrett is just all around 365. You okay, know, all right. Line. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate no, it. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> so uh, take me through the thought process today <clears throat> when you walk in the building <clears throat> and you sign the contract. I mean, this is a life changing contract for you. Like, what are the emotions? What are the thoughts when you put the pen to paper and everything becomes official? All right, so my initial thought walking in the um, building was, okay, I was a rookie last five years. All right, now I'm a new player, but from the same team. Mm. That's what I was thinking. Like, I just signed a new year, new five-year deal, fresh start. Is, I'm basically starting over, really. It's like, yeah, I'm one of the new guys now. Like, I'm OBJ them. Like, I just got here. <laughs> like, that's how I felt. So it felt pretty good. It felt it's, pretty it's, good. That is interesting. Yeah, well, what, like, I'm just curious, like, why you kind of went to that place. That's an interesting way of looking at it. I don't know. I'm just like, it's a new sleeve. You know, it's, it's everything is new now. You know, it's like I said, it's a new start for us. And we got new guys on our team. Um, and, you know, I'm not a rookie anymore. Now I'm a vet. You know, because, like, on my rookie deal, I felt like I was still a rookie mm. throughout the entire process. Like, you know, you're still on your rookie deal. You're not a vet yet. So certain things vets can get away with. I'm like, no, nah, I can't get away with that. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm still a rookie. To me, you know, that's just my mindset. Yeah, interesting. I, I think every kid, you know, playing football probably dreams of the day that they get drafted into the NFL, and I'm sure yeah. you did. Did you ever dream of this day when, when you sign a contract like that? Being honest with you, Ryan, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I never dreamed about Signing a huge contract, yeah. like a, a huge contract. I never did. You know, it was all about me winning the Super Bowl first. If anything, like, yeah. I, I just want to win. Like, once that confetti falling down, I feel like I accomplished what I wanted to. Like, right. you know, what I what I needed to do. You right. know? And I can't wait till that day happen. Like, okay, the contract is out the way, but I've been shooting for that Super Bowl since 2018, you know, and I really mean that. Like, right. once that day come, I'll be satisfied. Right. So you, you talk about the story of coming in today. I want to hear the story of when you kind of felt like, all right, we're, we're going to get there. You know, we're going to get a deal done here mm -hmm. uh, because it's been a long process, you know. Yeah. And Eric DaCosta told the story about watching the Celtics game and all that stuff. On What was happening on your end of the, the phone uh, that night? I think I don't really remember what I was doing that day. You know, he emailed me and he texted me like, I emailed you. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> Well, I wonder what he emailed me. Like, <laughs> you know, I haven't spoken to him in a, like a few weeks, like like yeah. probably like three weeks. I haven't spoken to him, so I was like, dang, I wonder what he texted me. And then when I, I get the email, you know, and stuff like that, I see the numbers and stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm like, this was a surprising email, you know. So I'm like, man, we getting somewhere now. Like, let's let's get it down on paper. Like, let's get this down on paper. I'm right. I'm like, what's going on here? Right. In, in that moment, was that just such a what were the emotions like? Was it just a relief, like, man, we finally got these numbers? Like, I like these numbers. Is, what was that moment like for you? Man, um, I finally get not not even like we finally get a deal done. It's like the fan base can finally like get a you know a stress relief, you know, because <laughs> I feel like the fans we we really meet their day. Like you know, we win or lose, it defines their work um their work ethic when they're at their jobs. Mm. You know, like people, I see people like, man, I'm not having a good week. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and I stuff felt like that. that. You know, like <laughs> I know you guys in the building too. You know, it's like yeah. even though we out there performing, we got the pads on. You know, we bleeding and, and you know we getting cut out there on the field. But it's like you guys are with us. You know, every step of the way. You know, so that's why we we out there fighting. You know, it's not just for us; it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, our families, you guys. You know, 
Because you guys got the Raven logo on your shirt. Like, prime example, right now, you right. know, you guys with a Raven flock nation on your or you guys sleeve as well. So it's like, we trying to win it for everybody, you know, the city of Baltimore. And so that's why, you know, when, when we finally got somewhere with the contract, I'm like, man, you yeah, know, like, the fans going to love this one. Like, it was all about the fans, too. That's cool. Yeah, along those lines, I just think that in your career, when you have the type of success that you have, you have become, like, entrenched in the – in this community like you are a beacon of light to a lot of young kids you are somebody that a lot of people look up to and i think that in conversations with you like that's something that you take seriously like that means something to you mm -hmm. and it sounds like you wanted to maintain that like by signing this deal like you're gonna be one of the greats one of like the icons here that people talk about for a very long time and it sounds like that is something that was really significant to you and that was part of the reason you wanted to stay Boston was one of the you know, prime, prime cities, you know, it's like, even my city, you know, but it's like Baltimore too, because I'm here, you know, it's part of my home now. And mm -hmm. it's like, man, I want to help the most people I could, you know, because that's, that's what God wants us to do. Yeah. Obviously, a lot was made out of you being your own agent, uh, but you yeah. did well. Perfect. You did real well, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, well, what, do you, that. what do you say to everybody out there who doubted that you could do it yourself? Uh, man, I, I really don't have nothing to say to them. You yeah. know, uh, it, it wasn't about them. You know, it never was about the yeah. people who doubted me. You know, I was doubted. I was a running back. I was a receiver. <laughs> right. You've dealt with the doubts I always, before. Yeah, that exactly. Whole story. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I really never cared about the doubters. You know, it was all about me just, you know, handling my business and then moving forward. You know, and like I handle my business now I'm moving forward. I really don't worry about them. It's not like, oh, I can throw it in your face now. It's not about that. Yeah. When I went to Super Bowl, I might. <laughs> I, I might, I might do that, and I don't want. Don't be surprised if we win the Super Bowl. I go to throwing stuff, and people are like, "You yeah, have the meme ready." You yeah, I have a meme, meme ready. ready. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk trash like that, but I have a meme ready. Okay, like, yeah. nice. No I doubt. can't wait for that one. No doubt. Me either. Me either, man. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, so along those lines, like you get the biggest contract ever in NFL history, and yeah. there's a lot of players that have played this game. Like, what is the significance of that to you? Like, when you we're looking at the biggest contracts, like you're at the top of that list right now. Man, to be honest with you, I really don't look at it like that. Okay. I really don't look at it like that. It's like so interesting. That was not like the, you. That wasn't like your goal. Like I, I really just didn't have that on the front of my mind. It's yeah. like okay, I know, I, I know, I feel like I know what I'm worth. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, but it's like, I, it really didn't matter. Like I, it wasn't like the front of my mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it happened. That's just God. To be honest with you, it's not. That's just God, man. I'm being honest. Like, that's just God. It seems like that was such a misconception. You know, mm -hmm. there's so, so much stuff out there about that. And, like, just yeah. talking to you today, it seems like that was totally baloney. Yeah. Like, people, oh, he's sitting out because he's not paid. I'm like, bro, <laughs> if anything, I would have sat out week one. Like, right. I cut, right. I was the one who cut it off. It was like, not Eric or Coach Harv, like, no one like that. Like, right. oh, you have this deadline. It was like me. I set the deadline. I'm like, man, because I don't want to talk about it. Like, right. I want to focus on winning. Right. I want everybody to know I'm tuned in with what's going on right now, not. You know, the contract we had all, all season to get that situated. It's not situated right now. So I just want to focus on winning with the guys. And that's just what it was. And I got hurt. Yeah. And the, the the injury was significant. Like, I couldn't go out there and play. Right. Like, I couldn't play to the best of my ability. ability. I couldn't go out there and I wasn't 90%, 80%. Like, I don't really know. Like, it was <laughs> it was bad, like, to me, you know, because yeah. I couldn't perform how I would. I couldn't get out of tackles. Like, I you can't trust. not be Lamar Jackson. Exactly. I can't trust the O-line just – going out there and blocking every single play because somebody going to mess up. I mess up out on the field. Everyone's not perfect. It's, that's part of the game. You know, right. you're going to slip up sometimes. You got to help a guy out here and there, you know, and our line do a great job, don't get me wrong, but it's like somebody might slip up and I got to, you know, get out of get off a tackle and stuff like that, and I couldn't do it. Right. So it's like, bro, I'd rather Snoop or Anthony go out there and perform, like, and probably help us win, you know, two games or something, and then I can try to give it a try. But, right. you know, it, God will, you know, it, it just didn't happen for us. But, you know, this year I'll be 100. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a different different it, year. How, how was was watching that playoff game one of the toughest things? <laughs> bro, killed you. Bro, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm watching the game at home, and like you know, I got I got the TV up, you know, so I'm like limping to the bathroom, like we about to score, we about to score. Then I just hear, ah, but I know our crowd like. Mm -hmm. We wasn't louder than Cincinnati that game. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. We always at all yeah. our games. Our fan base is crazy. We They be at every game, and they would be full. Like, we be going neck and neck with crowds. Like, uh -huh. it would be, like, full capacity with our guys and their, and their fans, you know. But I'm just hearing, like, ah, I don't know. I'm like, what? I, like, try to rush back to the TV. I look, and I'm seeing them score. I'm like, I was. I almost broke my TV. I'm like, bro, 
You're almost one of those videos that people <laughs> like, see if someone ripped the TV off. Yeah, the wall. like I was about to be one of those people. Yeah. But I thought about it, I got to pay for that. So yeah. like, no <laughs> point, like no point. So, but I was sick dog, man. Cause yeah. there's nothing more I wanted to do to be out there on that field, like with my guys, and I wasn't able to be out there because yeah. of an injury. That's why I told Adrian the trainer, I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna ever get hurt again. He like, you know, it's part of the game. I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to hit that. Like, <laughs> I'm not. That's not part of my game. Like I don't get hurt. Like that can happen again because I don't feel right. Like mm-hmm. just can't play football. Like I haven't ever had to happen. Yeah. So all right, I want to go to the Odell Beckham signing. So that move happens. Happy Easter, everybody. Easter Sunday. Yeah. And uh soon after the move happens, we see, you know, the FaceTime between you guys that you put out. Mm-hmm. And this was like the first time that I really felt like, okay, th- there's a lot happening here. It seems mm-hmm. like we're moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Like you clearly liked that move. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, you know, you guys were clearly talking, mm-hmm. you know, when he came here for his press conference, I'm sure you saw, he's like, Hey Lamar, if you're watching, you know, I'd love for you to come up here and play. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> so like, I've what did that. you think when the Odell move happened and how big was that to make you feel like, all right, like we're, everything's moving in that direction. I mean, uh, when, when it happened, because I, uh, I test, um, coach, I test coach Harz, I'm like, um, is it possible for us to land D Hop and Odell Beckham? Uh-huh. He was like, um, Ma, you know, we can't we can't make that happen. We can't get both of them. You know, we have Rashad Bateman. I'm like, I'm not taking anywhere away from Bateman. Like, yeah. I love Bateman. Like, he a guy, he a number one receiver. But I'm like, we can just be loaded. That's how I'm looking at it, like a man type game. <laughs> like, you're trying, you're trying to build like, your franchise. Man, I like yeah. Lamar, the like, GM. That, I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking, like, man, in terms, like, man, we can do anything. We just, I just want to win the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. it really don't matter. You know, we can one year deal. It don't really matter. Coach, yeah. just make it happen. You know, you're like, we can't do that. I'm like, like that, and then I see something come out like, "Oh, Lamar said if we can't get both of them, he's not signed." I'm like, "What? <laughs> no, he missed uh, whoever tweeted that out there. Like that's me. Yeah. Like no, yeah. I wasn't thinking that, but you know, it is what it is. But I was happy we got Odell though. Like we got one of them, you know. And then we, like I said, we got Bait, we got Doof, we got Pro, like right. we got Mark, like. Right. And then now we got Flowers. Zay. I was gonna say then we got Zay. It's like, bro, the sky's the limit for our offense, bro. You're saying, uh, you know, Todd Munkin, you're saying you got his playbook and, mm-hmm, and you mm-hmm. like what you see from there. Yeah, you know, obviously yeah. it's going to go from Greg was a run heavy scheme predominantly, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, moving into Todd Munkin's offense where you're expected, you know, we're expected to throw the ball more, you know, just how much does that kind of get your, your eyes wide and, and really kind of get you interested? Yeah, I feel like, you know how the owl's eyes be looking? I feel like that's how my eyes be looking because, like, <laughs> Bro, I love throwing touchdown passes. Yeah. Like, 2019, like, I think I was throwing, like, five touchdowns a game. Like, almost every other week. You led the NFL. Yeah, like, every other week. And I'd rather celebrate with my teammates because, like, okay, me running a touchdown, ah, okay, that's right. cool. But it's like, bro, <laughs> I don't have a celebration. Like, probably in youth football when I had to run touchdowns in, I probably had a celebration, but we couldn't celebrate in youth football. <laughs> so it's like, now I'm older, like, bro, I love throwing touchdowns. I'd rather have my teammate do something funny and then I just come and dap them up. Like, man, I, I'd rather throw them, bro. And then right. I feel like those guys – they they busting their tail like they not like not to take away anything from Giro or anything like that because he he was successful with us but it's like those guys want to catch the ball like that's what they're here for they want to catch the ball and yeah. do their thing you know get their yak and, and make stuff happen like they don't want to make it seem like all oh, they here for us to block you know right. and I feel like those guys deserve that and I'm happy with the, the sign of Coach Todd Monkey because we can you know show our offensive skill level right for for you personally you know we've in Baltimore always seen just how talented you are as a runner, obviously mm-hmm. special, and, and as a passer, mm-hmm. right? And and now with Todd's offense, with all these weapons, yeah. the world's about to see, right? Absolutely. Like, is that something for you that you're like, you know what, like, y'all been putting me in this box for so long, and I can't wait to just bust out of that box. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't wait. Like, jack in the box. You know why? <laughs> you got to pop out. Like, that's, that's what I'm on this year. And then, like, you know, not to take away from the run game because we got J.K. and Gus. Right. You know, just so the ball. We don't want to make just J.K. Feel. We got those right. guys, you know. Right. J.K., he passionate. You know, he's very <laughs> passionate, and I love it. You know, uh, we got to have a running back like that. Gus, he's yeah. passionate. Justice, he's passionate. Like, and I, I love our running backs, you know, but it's let them do that job. You know, right. that's for them. You know, and I'm the quarterback. <laughs> let me throw it. And if some not open, then I just do my thing. Then right. you can see the Lamar special moments, you know. Right. Yeah. Something that came up during the press conference was, the night you were drafted, and you, we all remember the interview, and they're yeah. going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Mm-hmm. Like, that to me seems like a significant part of your story still. Like, it seems like that moment, that quote, like, like you, that still really means something to yeah, you. Yeah, it do. It do, because I'm a man of my word at the end of the day. Like, like my mom always taught me to be that. Like, if you're going to do something, if you say you're going to do something, you got to do it. So, all them times we, we didn't make it to the Super Bowl, nobody's matter to me. 
Like, I don't care what they done. Like, I, I'm i the one who put that out there. Like, they're going to get a Super Bowl out of me. So every year we fail, 2018, 2019, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, it's like, bro, I didn't live up to what I said. I didn't live up to my word. I wasn't a man of my word. So it's like, now I got five more years to prove it, you know? So it's like, I got to make it happen within the five years. And I got great guys around me. And hopefully we make it happen. Sooner or later, mm-hmm. but sooner, like sooner. Is yeah, I like sooner. sooner. I like the option of sooner. I, I'm, I'm sooner for sooner, <laughs> not, not later. I mean, not now, later. We got not five now, fingers later. on this hand. We got five yeah, on this. Hand, you hopefully, know. be five more. You know, <laughs> with a couple Super Bowls behind that. There you, know? you go. Well, yeah. my my biggest takeaway, Lamar, from your press conference was that you know you didn't want to go anywhere else. Yeah, you no. wanted to be here. That was yeah. my big thing. And and do you feel like other teams? got that sense too, you know, when they were able to negotiate with you and it was a short conversation basically that like, <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Cause like they would, they would shoot a shot and it was like, <laughs> but I really don't want to go here. Like back in my mind, like back in the front of my mind, I'm like, but I really don't want to go here. Cause like I didn't do what I said I was going to do there. Yeah. I can see if I had one Super Bowl, won a couple, you know, then I'd be like, okay, we can see, we can explore. But it's like, bro, I got unfinished business here. Like, I gotta finish what I started. Mm-hmm. You know, we we was going up the, the you know, we was going up the right mountain, um, the right you know, the right status and stuff like that, uh, twenty nineteen, but we lost in the right. playoffs and it's like twenty eighteen, I don't think no other rookie quarterback went to the playoffs either. Right. right. And we wasn't people weren't thinking Lamar Jackson was gonna lead a team to the play, um to the playoffs. Right. That was those, a magical run. You know, so it was like, man, we made it to the playoffs twenty eighteen, you know, we fell short to Chargers. Make it to the playoffs again when we lose to the Titans. Make it to the playoffs again when we lose to the Bills. And it's like, bro, I think the, next, the following year we didn't even make it. Like, it's like, bro, we got to do something. Like, we got to make something happen because, like, I be feeling like we right there. Like, we be having a team to do it. One one year we was injured all mm-hmm. over the place, you know, right. so we couldn't do it. We didn't make the playoffs. But it's like, bro, we be right there, and it's like it be a little small stuff that we need to fix, you know, to, you know, be competing with those other guys. Yeah, like when I look at your career, like that five year span, like you can kind of look through all those things. Like 19, the team was great mm-hmm. and just had not the best game against the Titans, just a yeah. disappointing game against the Titans. Mm-hmm. And you kind of got to go through it the last two years, you got hurt, you know, at the end mm-hmm. of the season. And so mm-hmm. that was like, you know, just disappointing. Mm-hmm. But it feels like, in hearing you talk, like, you feel like this team is right there. Like yeah. you add these pieces, you add Odell Beckham, you add Zay Flowers. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're here for the long haul mm-hmm. and like, nothing to worry about there right mm-hmm. and so it's like it just feels like that you also see the team is right on the cusp absolutely I, I feel like we're right there you know um, our defense was great our defense right. was tremendous last year and like I said I was ticked off I couldn't play in that playoff game it's like bro defense is playing lights out they holding teams to like 13 points I know we can score 28 points <laughs> <laughs> I know we can do this like man so like yeah we right there and then we like you said we got pieces to um, add to our guys you know to the, to the guys we already have and it's like man I feel like the sky's the limit we just gotta we just gotta lock in and, and believe in that you know don't let no outside noise bother us like try to distract us cause it's gonna always be that you know it's gonna be entertainment at the end of the day so People got to just say what they got to say, but at the end of the day, it's, it's on us. When you, during the press conference, when you talked about your mom and her impact, that struck me mm-hmm. because, you know, you guys are so close. She's your manager. You were your own agent. And so you guys have just been really kind of joined at the hip, not just as like business partners and obviously family, yeah. but it's significant. Like your relationship is special. Absolutely. I, I'm curious what the moment was like when you get this contract done and it's just the two of you and you think about, all those times like you talked about during the press conference of her going to work early and staying late and raising you and your siblings. Mm -hmm. Like what was that moment like for you to enjoy and and kind of relish in that with her? Man, it was like, uh, that's when I got her a gift. Like, I'm like, bro, you deserve this gift. Like she been wanting this, this, this one item is like, I'm gonna get it for you. You deserve it. Like, and she was like, at first she was like, you can wait the next year. I'm like, nah, I'm getting it this year. <laughs> and she was like, if stuff was happening, like, it was, like, trying to prevent me from getting it for her. I'm like, man, I don't care. No matter what, I'm not leaving her without it. And, you know, um, she got it. And then she just called me the other day. She was like, man, I'm happy you got it for me. Like, I said, wait the next year, but I'm so happy you got it for me. I'm like, yeah, because she's, like, other. I feel like other, um, other players or, you know, players at my status, parents, like digging their pocket, not all, but some might, you know, reach in and try to dig in their child's pocket and stuff like that just because they feel like they raised them and stuff like that. But my mom is not like that. Mm. You know, she's totally different. Like, she'll be on me if she if she think I'm spending too much. Like, oh, my, I just bought this or something. She, what? 
Like, what are you doing? Like, that's how she come at me. So it's like, she gonna always be my mom at the end of the day. And it was like, I need to get you something. You know, you deserve this because you never asked me for nothing. My siblings never asked me for nothing. But it'd be like other people and the outside world asked me for stuff. So it was like, our mom deserved everything. That's you awesome. Know? I don't know yeah. what the gift is, but I'm sure it's a whole lot better than the gift I'm giving my mom this year. <laughs> <laughs> you're, make, you're making the rest of us sons look like <laughs> Lamar. No, nah, man. See, that's why I'm not saying what I got. <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, no, I'm not going to do y'all like that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Like that. I appreciate that. All. And, you know, I'm sure she went through the, this these whole negotiations. You know, it was a long time, right? Yeah. And she felt the weight of that, too. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure you felt it. Right? People like, definitely without her, and I seen it. Right. Yeah. Like, what does it feel like a, a weight off your shoulders getting this done? And it's just like, whew, man, I can just be me. I don't have to worry about that for five plus years. You know, like, what's the feeling? Uh, not, not even like weight on my shoulders. I, I never felt like weight was on my shoulder. It was mm. about people can finally just mind their business now. <laughs> Go back to doing what they're supposed to do now because we're good. You know, we, we yeah. did what we're supposed to do. You know, we handle business. Um, and, and we fine, you know, like I said, it's not about the doubters and the naysayers, you know, it was about us just proving each other, proving ourselves right. And right. I feel like we did. Right. Now, I don't know if you know this, uh, but when Joe Flacco signed his big contract <laughs> extension, his first one, yeah. his uh, first purchase was McDonald's drive through I believe it was, right? <laughs> nah. No, 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 that's nah, not. No, I'm, I'm fasting right now. I can't, I can't eat no You're McDonald's. fasting right now? Yeah, oh. I'm fasting, yeah. Oh, Spiritual fasting. And I'm like, okay. I'm only four days in. So. Okay, so all right. So no, McDonald's, how, no how Big long? Macs today. No, nah, I'm not eating no Big Macs. How long is the fast going? I might not eat another going? Big Mac, though, huh? How long is the fast for? 21 days, Woo! 17 days, though. Good luck to you, sir. I've I don't have doing, that much willpower. No, nah, I do. I do. I respect it. I feel like I do. You know, I've been doing pretty good without it. You know, <laughs> just know what you're not supposed to eat. And, you know, you ask questions like, what is this? Like, what do you have? What's yeah. the ingredients in it? They tell you, you no, know, just find something that's good, that's suitable for you. And right. that's what I've been doing. Well, you know, the, the saying, you know, treat yourself. You know, you, sometimes you got to, it's a treat yourself day. Absolutely. Will you eventually, it's not food. It's not going to be Big Mac. No, no. But will you eventually treat yourself after getting this deal done? And what do you think it'll be? Uh, be honest with you, I'm cool. Like, like, I don't learn so much about like spending and stuff like that. Like, I really don't have the urge to spend. You know, yeah. Only if I have to go somewhere, that's probably when I have I go buy something. But me just going and buying a house only oh, because I can afford it. Like, I've been could afford a house. Like, I'm not, <laughs> You've been but doing it's like, all right. Yeah, like I've been handling, I've been managing my money right. Yeah. But it's like I don't need to go do that. Like, yeah. You know, rainy days come to everyone. You know, I feel. But I'm good. Like. I'm good. You know, it's it's funny is like you know you have your like Ravens like shield like yeah, your your, yeah. your necklace, yeah. and uh, I it was always funny over this whole thing where fans would be like, oh, he's wearing his chain, he's still wearing his chain, yeah. like yeah. Dude, like he wants he wants to come back. I can yeah. see the chain. You know, it was just so funny. That always cracked me up. I'm just glad that we don't have to read into you know a meme or the chain picture and be like, all right, what does this mean? Let's dissect the well, picture. Oh what does it mean? Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm sure was... you had everyone in your DMs. <laughs> I was seeing that, like, I, um, like, cause my my chain, like, I have the rave, the Raven Shield. Yeah. Like, I, I thought that was unique right there because every, a lot of people who have chains like mine, they have like circles uh -huh. and stuff like that. So I'm like, dang, I, I'm gonna use the uh, Raven symbol, but I just put like, the the city I'm from, like CB County, like, um, the area I'm from, and like, know your boy, like Pompano and boy, like stuff like something simple. Like, I just wanted to be different, but people were just blowing out of proportion, like, oh. This means he want to stay and stuff like that. But it was like, I never said I wanted to go for real. Right. Like, okay, the trade, I requested a trade, but it was nothing serious for real. Like, you know, <laughs> like, that was just getting the ball rolling. It was business. Ball. Yeah, it's business, man. That's part of business. But I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm satisfied. That's in the past. I'm glad that's over with. You know, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're very happy too, Lamar. Thanks Appreciate a lot, man. You. Congratulations. Appreciate it, bud. Appreciate you, Thank man. Thank you, man. Yes, sir, man. Cool. Welcome back to The Lounge. We're sitting here in the Seat Geek studio. We also want listeners and viewers to know that DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of the Baltimore Ravens and has a limited time offer that you do not want to miss. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today using the code FLOCK. New customers can get a deposit bonus of up to $1,000. That is only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code FLOCK. Please play responsibly. And for help, visit mdgamblinghelp.org or call one 800 Gambler. Also, the Preakness is coming up. Another big event here in Baltimore. It's going to be an event unlike any other. Pimlico Racecourse is preparing to host a uniquely Maryland tradition on May 20th, 2023. Racing fans can experience the action with an afternoon of on-site thrills and a legendary lineup of entertainment. For more info and to get your tickets, visit www.preakness.com. 
Com. So in terms of the big takeaways uh, from the entire day, the conversation with him here in the lounge, mm -hmm. the press conference, what stands out to you? I think it was that he really had no doubt in his mind that he wanted to be a Raven. Yeah. You know, and he kind of slipped it in right there at the end of our conversation. He's like, yeah, the trade request, that was just a bunch of nothing. That yeah. was, <laughs> you know, that was nothing. That was yeah. games. Yeah. You know, and... Um, that was really my biggest takeaway that like, you know, even when other teams were kind of sniffing around, he mm -hmm. was like, nah, not really interested, yeah. you know, and like, and, and it really does shine through and it, it feels very genuine that he feels like there's unfinished business here and that he made a promise to Baltimore and to Ravens fans and that he was going to win a Super Bowl, you know, when he was first drafted and he wants to deliver on that promise. Yeah. That, I think that really does mean something to him. Yeah, I, um, even during this entire process, like I would oftentimes go back to what he said before last season. He was asked, do you expect to spend your career in Baltimore? And he said yes. He, mm -hmm. That was That's his expectation. That was his belief. Yep. And it seemed like at times during the negotiations, eh, I don't know if that's going to happen. Right. But like... But what's funny is, you know, he said <laughs> with us, he's like, you know, if I had won a Super Bowl or two or something, maybe it would be a little bit different. Yeah. You know, so it really does kind of come back to, like, that promise and being a man of my word. And, yeah. like, I said I was going to do this, and I haven't done it, and we've been really close, and then I was injured, you know, last year. And, like, we got to do it. Yeah. You know, and, like, I think a lot of it does kind of hinge on that. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, the, he mentioned in the presser, I asked him about it here, and I think you're right. A lot of it does come back to that promise that he declared on draft night and like something that i've always said with lamar is like integrity and like keeping your word like those are things that mean a lot to yes, him yes very high and like yeah he values trust. those trust um he values those very highly yep um and he carries himself that way and he expects others to do the same yep and so like it's clear that like that is something that means something to him and i also thought you know it was it was awesome hearing him talk about how the fan base Ravens fans like he that was a group of people uh he wanted to maintain that relationship like he didn't mm -hmm. want to leave this city he didn't want to leave this fan base mm -hmm. and um despite all the negotiations like negotiations can be difficult as Erica said but like he wanted to be here the Ravens said all along they wanted they wanted him to be here and it worked out so it was just a it was a, a very historic day in franchise history well yeah and, and another big takeaway for me was kind of you know the money aspect of it has been talked about a lot yeah at nauseum and what Lamar wanted and what he didn't want there's reports all over the place right and like you know Lamar in talking to him today money matters to everybody sure you know matters to you matters to me <laughs> matters to everybody <laughs> right and so it's not saying like, oh my gosh, it doesn't matter. I would have played for a dollar, you know, but like he said, you know, I wanted to feel like it was fair. I knew my worth and I wanted to feel like I was getting paid what I'm worth. Right. And obviously that's kind of when things changed is, you know, the Ravens made that offer. Mm -hmm. You know, he got the email from Eric Costa and was like, I like this offer. Yeah. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't like it was being portrayed. Right. Mm -hmm. That like, you know, there was he was stuck on this and the fully guaranteed and all that stuff. Like, it, certainly coming away from today, that seemed like that wasn't really true. Right. Well, and like, it, the, one of the challenges with this entire negotiation, and he kind of talked about it, like, there was just a void of, like, there was an absence of information mm -hmm. from both sides. Both sides were keeping it as quiet as possible. Yeah. And so then the speculation runs rampant, and then the guessing game begins. And then you're trying to piece together reports from different people over the course of the last two years. And, well, on this day, on August 17th, 2022, yeah. this was set, like, all these different things. And it was difficult to determine, like, what was fact and what was fiction. Um, well, it makes me think about the NFLPA and this whole thing and, you know, Timari Smith was pretty darn clear about mm -hmm. his intentions, you know, and that he wants fully guaranteed contracts and felt like Lamar was kind of uh, an inflection point for the league when it comes to that. And, like, where was all that coming from, that, that that's what Lamar wanted? Sure, yeah. I have no idea. Um, but it was – it just is – the whole thing, like, was an interesting process, obviously, and it's um, – I don't know. I just think that like the, the word that stands out is just like it it just feels like it's a deep breath. It's a sigh of relief. For and sure. like and like everybody looking forward now, it's like, all right, it took a while, but it's done. And that also stood out, and we actually got an email here, this is from Kai Danger. 
This is to the lounge at ravens.nfl.net. Kai's a loyal listener. Loyal listener. Thank you for yep. the email, Kai. And Kai says that the main takeaway from him is not about the negotiations. Yep. It's his musings about being the first to throw for 6,000 passing yards. <laughs> he just kind of <laughs> mentioned that casually during the press conference. Like, yeah, it'd be nice to throw for 6,000. No one's ever done that. Yeah. And so he talks to some guys about that or something. Yeah, like so what cool. a different mindset for him and the team. Even if he doesn't get close, it's clear he sees more opportunities in this passing game. This well, is going to be a question, fun year. Here's the question for you, okay? Because every year when we do our preseason predictions, we always say over or under 1,000 rushing yards – for Lamar Jackson, and you always go over. I'm always the under, and then I, I'm i always higher on the passing yards for yeah. Lamar. That's the, been the, the trend. Right. I'm supposed to you right now, big boy. <laughs> I would say right now, my thought is that he's going to go under 1,000 rushing yards. Yeah. He's going to run run less. This is a new offense with Todd Munkin. Yep. I think that Lamar will run less this year. I think they have more weapons around him with the addition of Odell Beckham Jr. and Zay Flowers yep. and a healthy Rashad And Nelson Bateman. Aguilar. And Nelson Aguilar, thank you. So, like, they have more weapons around him. Yep. Isaiah Likely, I think, is going to be a really important piece, along yep. with, of course, Mark Andrews. So, like, they've got they've got weapons in the receiving core. And I think that they're going to have kind of a high-powered offense. And I don't know that Lamar's going to get to 6,000. I'm going to go <laughs> on a limb there and say I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But I do think that he could absolutely have a career high in passing yards and, you know, rush – I'm not sure what his career low is in rushing yards. I could look that up, but you know, I think that I think that the the well, scale's going to yeah exactly certainly. injuries. Like I think the scales are going to tip there, and it's going to be a much more pass heavy offense. Yeah, certainly a takeaway from today is just how excited he is about all these weapons. You know how pumped he was to get OBJ. You know how excited he is about Zay Flowers, and um, and certainly in talking to us, I thought he re revealed a little bit more about kind of breaking out of that box that he's been put in. You know, and now having the weapons around him and the scheme around him to kind of help him take that next step in evolution in his career that he feels like all along I've been able to do this y'all just haven't seen it yet yeah you know look, I, mean? I mean like <clears throat> he did win the MVP in 2019 he led the league in passing touchdowns Correct. so like he's done it um it just in well, terms I think of, it's I think it's more like yards I think yeah, it's more I yards think that's yards. why he mentioned 6,000 yards I think efficiency <clears throat> was there certainly in 2019 absolutely and, <laughs> you can't get any more efficient than he was that season. Yeah, and so I just think that it's gonna. Like I said, the t the scales are gonna tip a little bit more in that direction. When I think and just fewer design quarterback runs. Yeah, it's yeah. not that Lamar's not gonna run anymore. He's still gonna, like he said, you know, if there's not an open option, which this year with all the wide receivers, you hope there's always an open option. Yeah, but if there's not, the rare instance that there's not, he'll take off and run. And you'll still see him juke guys out of shorts and break ankles and do all that stuff that we all the highlights that we all love. Yeah, but and. And I wouldn't say that there will be zero design quarterback runs. I think in critical situations, you know, in whatever, I don't think that that's something that will evaporate from the Ravens' offense, but I think it'll certainly be scaled down. Yeah, I, I would Dramatically think so. Dramatically so. Yeah, I think that the weapons, the shift in offensive coordinators, um, and also the running backs are healthy too. That's yep. another factor here. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, year removed from the injury, so they can carry, you know, more of a workload as well. So. Yep. Uh, it was just a good day. It was it was really good to hear from him. Uh, if you want to listen to the full press conference, we'll go ahead and check out the Ravens Press Pass podcast feed. We have that posted for you in its entirety, as well as, of course, if you want to watch the video, uh, we have it posted on our YouTube channel, our app, our website, our Facebook page. And uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, the Lounge Podcast feed, and also subscribe to the Press Pass podcast feed. Leave a rating and a review for both of those as well. So, you know, it's one thing after another here. Well, we thought we were going to have Eric DaCosta on this week. Yes. And we had to reschedule because yes. the Lamar press conference. But, you know, you you reschedule for Lamar. Yeah, sure. Sorry, no no shade to EDC. Of course. But, you know, uh, so we're pushing that to early next week. Yeah, so we're going to sure get with Eric. And then, and then rookie minicamp is this weekend. Yep. And uh, football school is ongoing. So boom, boom, boom. It's one thing after another. So there's going to be a lot more coming over the course of the next few weeks. And we are going to here to analyze it, break it all down and give you an inside scoop to everything that's happening inside this building. So thank you for watching and listening, and we'll talk with you again soon.